Hi guys, it's Sam here with Bargain Hunting Blonde and today I am bringing to you a video that is five important tips when buying pre-loved luxury items. So I get a lot of questions about buying pre-loved and is it safe and should you do it? And so these are some of the things that I consider when I'm thinking about buying pre-loved bags. And just as a disclaimer for anyone who does not like buying pre-loved, you do not have to buy pre-loved. You are always welcome to buy at the boutique if you prefer. I know a lot of people really like the boutique experience. I personally have never had a fabulous boutique experience um, basically anywhere. I have had one really good experience at Dior and that was it. Um, and I have bought in boutiques all over the world. So I think it just really depends on, you know, what you're looking for. And maybe you have a really great relationship with an SA. And if that's the case and pre-love's not your thing, then it's probably not the video for you. But if you're interested in buying pre-loved or you buy pre-loved all the time, then this is the video for you. So as I have been doing, being more eco-friendly in 2021 and in the last half of 2020, it's on my phone. So I do apologize if I look down. So number one, and I think this is a really, really important piece that a lot of people forget, is to know the retail price of the item. So a lot of times, it happens to me, I'll be on Fashion File or on The Real Real, Yuki's Closet, eBay, and I'll be shopping and I'll see a piece that I'm like, wow, I really like that. Like, I kind of remember seeing that maybe on Instagram or, you know, in some sort of lookbook or even maybe at the store, but I never actually like looked at it. So I didn't know the retail price. And I'll see it and I'll be like, oh, that seems like a pretty reasonable price for, you know, a Chanel piece, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, whatever. And then I'll come to find out that that's actually above retail and that's not that good of a price. And if it is still in boutiques, I should try to find it that way or I should just keep looking. So a lot of times we will think something is maybe a good price because we think expect to be more expensive, but it is still over retail. So just because it's on the pre-loved market does not mean that that piece is below retail, does not mean that it is a good price, does not mean that it is a good deal because I will see the same piece in the same condition on Fashion File, for example, at literally like 10 different prices. So just because you're seeing a piece at that price does not mean it does not go lower, does not go higher. Just know your retail price because that's a really good starting point for if this is a good buy or not. And I know a lot of us are on the pre-loved market because we are looking for deals with how expensive some of these pieces have gotten from fashion houses. You know, one of the things that has really kind of turned me off from some brands is the price increases and how expensive some pieces have gotten. There are some Louis Vuitton pieces that I really like, but they're fully canvas and they're over $3,000 just doesn't make sense to me. So that's sometimes when I'll turn pre-loved, especially if it's not a very common piece, you can normally get a really good deal. So know your retail price, that's number one. Number two is know what is important to you when shopping retail. So you'll see, especially with some of these sites that are a little more descriptive, like Yugi's Closet or Fashion File, for example, that they will say exactly what comes with the item and what condition the item is in. So you need to know what is important to you. For example, for me, I will completely and totally buy Chanel without the authenticity card. For me, authenticity cards can be faked. They are literally a piece of plastic. They could be taken from another bag. I do not care if the bag has the authenticity card. If it does, great, but I'm not willing to pay more for an authenticity card. So for me, that's not a deal breaker. I also do not need, as you guys can see, I have lots of boxes. I do not need more boxes. So if an item from Louis Vuitton doesn't come with all its packaging, that's fine. I have a lot of Louis Vuitton packaging that I don't even know what to do with, yet I cannot get rid of it. So don't need more packaging. But for some people, they want a full set. And especially with Chanel, I've noticed that's very common where you want, you know, the dust bag, the box, the authenticity card, the ribbon and the camellia, if you can get that. Uh, you know, you want the cleaning cloth and all the care cards, sometimes even the receipt. So if that's important to you, that's something you should know about yourself that you need all that stuff. Again, for me, I don't even care if it comes with a dust bag. I can find another dust bag. I can buy another dust bag. Um, I have one sitting in just in front of me. That is a fashion file dust bag. I'm totally fine with keeping a piece in a fashion file dust bag. It's actually a uh, Chanel piece that's in a fashion file dust bag that it just didn't come with a Chanel dust bag. I don't care. It's in a dust bag and it's safe. So that's all that really matters to me. But that's something you need to decide for yourself. And you need to know that might make you upset when you see something, you know, pre-loved. You need to know what you're getting and you need to know that it might not be a full set. On that same note, you need to know what type of condition you are okay with. Some people are only gonna be able to buy, you know, 
as new or excellent condition bags, while other people can buy all the way down to fair, especially if they're willing to send it off to like a leather surgeons or a purse rehab or Ragu Brothers, Ragu Brothers, I might have said that wrong. I might have said it like the pasta sauce, or I think it's Ragu, Ragu Brothers. All those places are great at repairing bags. And so if you don't mind having to do that repair and you got a great deal on the bag, then that's, you could buy, you know, a lower rated piece in its, you know, quality scale of how well this bag has been taken care of. But for some people, anything lower than excellent is not gonna work for them. Even very good might have too much wear on it for them. I personally like bags that have a little bit of wear. I am less scared to use them. I find that I'm less worried about them. So I'm one of those people who's totally willing to take on a project. I also, this is a little weird, but it's just me. I love cleaning handbags to relax. I will totally take out the wet wipes and all the different, I have literally a closet of leather cleaners, all the different leather cleaners, and I will just clean my bags. And sometimes that's all these bags need to go from like a fair to like a very good is there was a mark on them and if you can get it off you just got yourself a really good deal or if you're willing to pay you know say you have a great cobbler in your area and all you need is like a little rivet fixed on a strap and you don't care if it's the louis vuitton rivet you can really get a good deal on some bags also louis vuitton does do repairs on many items even if they're super super vintage so something else to consider is some brands are much better at repairing their items than others like Chanel's not gonna look at it but Louis Vuitton if it's vintage if they can still do repairs on it and it's authentic they normally will so you need to figure out for you what you want in a pre-loved item and that is both accessories like the dust bag the box all of that and quality and only you can determine that like sometimes people will send me things and be like oh do you think this is you know uh, a good purchase because it's got this wear on it and I'm like for me I would be fine with that but you might not be fine with that if you aren't don't spend the money I have definitely made the mistake of buying around items where you, you know, or buying an item that's not in as good of quality as you would have wanted. And then you're upset because you didn't buy the exact item you wanted or the quality you wanted. And these are all really expensive, regardless of what bag you're buying from like Coach to, you know, Hermes. Those are all expensive purchases compared to like just, you know, using a very cheap bag from, you know, like Forever 21. So if you're not comfortable with the quality or what it comes with, don't buy it. It, even if you think it's a deal, just don't buy it. Number three. So this one is also really important and I often forget about it. And I wrote about it in an Instagram post in December and it is be patient. I'm not very good at this. I know a lot of us aren't. We see something, we really want that something and then we go hunting for it. But if you can wait and be patient, you will find a deal. There will always be another handbag and probably a handbag in the price point you want, assuming you're in a realistic range. Like, you know, sometimes I see people are like, I want a Chanel classic flap in excellent condition for $500. And it's like, that's not gonna happen unless it's a fake bag. But you can find, if you're in a reasonable price range and you're willing to wait, you will find the bag you want. And I say create safe searches on Yugi's Closet, check Fashion File a lot, check The Real Real a lot, which also has safe searches. eBay has safe searches. And I know eBay will email you when new items come in or text you when new items come in for your safe search. So you, there are you know resources to help you be patient and keep hunting. I've made many a mistake where I was like, I really want this bag, I find it. I pay, you know, maybe a little over what I wanted to pay or sometimes even a lot over what I wanted to pay. And then literally like two weeks later, exact same, you know, condition, what I wanted comes up and it's like a thousand dollars cheaper. We've all done it. We've all been there where we weren't patient. We didn't wait and then we didn't get the deal we wanted. So definitely something to consider is being patient. And I know it's really, really hard, but especially on the pre-loved market, it's important. And there will always be another bag. It might take a while. As I know, having been a pre-loved hunter for a while, but another bag will come back. It is a bag. Because I definitely have gotten myself worked up when I have missed what I thought was like the deal of the century for a bag. And my husband's like, it's literally a bag, Sam. And then like, you know, maybe a week later, maybe a couple months later, the bag appears again. Four, another really important one. I guess these are all important. Always authenticate your piece. You have spent a lot of money on that bag and you want to know that it's authentic. There is nothing worse than spending a bunch of money on something that is a fake bag. And I authenticate everything, literally everything, regardless of where it comes from. Came from a boutique, very, very likely authenticating, especially after I saw the different videos from people about people who've bought pieces from boutiques and they have been fake because people have returned fakes and the sales associates didn't notice and then sold it on. 
So authenticate from Fashion File, even though they do their authentication, I've always been really lucky with them. I still re-authenticate the bag. Um, I authenticate obviously from eBay. Um, I authenticate from like everything. And I think it's totally worth the money that you're spending. Uh, depending on what service you're using, I've seen anywhere from $15 to about $50, uh, depending on the item and how quickly you want your services returned to you and everything like that. I personally love and use, and this is not all sponsor or affiliated or anything, Real Authentication, which I always have linked down below. I do have a $5 off code if you want to use it. Their services are normally about $30 for all handbags. Um, and they have quicker services, like 12 hour, or one hour turnaround. But my experience has been when I just buy the basic service, I normally get an answer back within 12 to 24 hours anyway. And that works for me. Uh, that works within most return periods. So I would highly recommend Real Authentication. They're great. Uh, you just go on to their website, you upload pictures straight from your phone or straight from your computer. And if they need more, they'll let you know. They'll be like, hey, we need a picture of, you know, this and this and they get back to you. And they have two people look at each item and I really trust them. Uh, they're my favorite service, but I'm, there's lots of other services out there. If you have someone that you know that another friend has recommended, I'm sure they're great. It's just, you know, you can have bought a lot of bags. I have bought a lot of bags. And so I can generally tell when something's authentic or not, but there are some brands that I own many, many bags in and I can just not tell. Uh, for example, Celine. Celine seems to stamp everything different. I think I have like probably 15 Celine bags from all like super vintage to like brand new. Um, and I still cannot tell what is totally authentic and what is not. Celine is just has, you know, kind of stamping all over the board. So I always make sure to authenticate all my Celine bags. Again, not worth paying all that money for a fake. If you do get a fake from any of these services, they normally have a money back guarantee, uh, including eBay. So eBay is really, really good when you are a buyer and you end up with a fake bag or a bag that was not as described or something like that. They are really, really good with stuff like that. Um, I know they're not so good if you're a seller, but I do not sell on eBay, I only buy on eBay, and I have had really good experiences with them. And lastly, and I think this is important, know, especially in COVID, know the return policy of the platform you're buying from. So, for example, if you're buying a handbag from the Real Real, they do not allow returns on handbags unless there's something very wrong described with the bag. And even then you have to email them and it's a little bit of a back and forth to get the bag returned. I know some people that's happened to and they have gotten to return the item, but like I said, it is like a week long at least process of talking to them and explaining to them like what is wrong with the bag. I know Fashion File has basically a no questions asked return for 30 days, which I think is great. I know Yugi's Closet also has free returns. I also believe it's 30 days. eBay depends on the seller. Um, I have had some experiences where a seller will say no returns, but then the item I get is like not at all as described and eBay will step in if the seller doesn't allow the return and allow the return. Um, which is if you have seen my like worst luxury purchases video, I talk about how I did buy a Celine on there and it ended up being fake thanks to authentication services. I knew that and I contacted the seller. The seller never got back to me. eBay stepped in, gave me all my money back and unfortunately, which I do not want, the bag is sitting in my mother's closet uh, because I cannot look at that bag and I hate it. But I also don't want to like give it away. I don't know what to do with it because I don't want someone else to see this bag and think it's authentic and pay more money for it than they should. Um, I also don't believe in selling replicas or fakes even if you acknowledge that it is a replica or fake. I don't know what to do with it. So it just sits in a closet for now. But eBay was really good about helping me get my money back on that. So just know the return policies. Um, it's going to vary by platform and know what your rights are as a pre-loved buyer, especially if the item is fake or, you know, some people will use stock photos and then you actually get the item and the item is completely destroyed. Um, I personally, just platforms that I would stick to in general, Fashion File, Yuki's Closet, The Real Real, eBay, I'm sure I'm forgetting some in there, uh, Tradesy occasionally, I've had I think tradesy really depends on the seller. Some sellers are great and like disclose everything and others don't. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I know there is Vestiare Collective, which I'm sure I just said wrong. I personally don't like buying from them because they have a lot of fees on top of the purchase price um, and it takes forever to get your item. Uh, but those are kind of the platforms I can think of. I personally would not buy high-end luxury goods on Poshmark or Mercari anymore. I used to buy a lot on both. Uh, but there are a lot, a lot of fakes running really, really rampant. And I have seen the fakes get through 
Poshmark's authenticity check. Um, I also know that, you know, Poshmark will kind of uh, let people, if you've ever seen She's the Posh's video, I'll link her channel down below. She had an incident where a bag was completely broken and the seller did not write it in the description, but had the broken piece in the background of one of the photos and Poshmark was like, oh, that was enough. You should have known. I don't know how you would know that. So I try to stay away from those two. But like I said, those other platforms, which I'll have linked down below, they're great to buy from. Um, you know, you just got to be smart about buying pre-loved. But I think it is totally worth the cost savings. It is a sustainable way to buy more luxury. And, you know, if 2020 has taught me anything, it's we don't need all the things we have and whatever we should buy, be buying. We should try to make it as sustainable as possible, which I know isn't always available, but pre-loved is a great way to buy sustainably. And, you know, the last one is that it allows you to buy some really cool pieces. I love vintage pieces. I would never, ever be able to buy them in the boutique. And I find them online. And they're, a lot of times, vintage pieces are really good prices. And they're really cool. And I know for a lot of people in the luxe community, not having a bag that everyone else has is important. Not necessarily important to me, but important to a lot of people. And that's vintage. And pre-loved is a great way to do that because these are pieces you cannot pick up in boutiques. So thank you so much for tuning into today's video. If you like this sort of video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video, which is twice a week. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. If you have any pre-love tips, any questions about buying pre-love, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Also, a lot of you do, and I love it. DM me. I love to talk about handbags. Sometimes my response times can be a little slow if I'm really, really in a work moment, but a lot of times I try to get back to you. I love to talk about handbags, so I'm always there for you guys. So just feel free to DM me on Instagram, which my Instagram's linked down below. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.